Hey, welcome to Genre Chat. I'm Caleb Walton, and I'm really excited to welcome Sherry Lynn Bisbano back to the show. Hey, Sherry Lynn. Hi, Caleb. Thank you for having me again. I love I love talking to you. <laughs> I know. We could go on for hours. We do go on for hours sometimes, <laughs> when, even when we're not recording. Are you guys yeah. getting ready for Christmas up there? I know this is actually, I think, going to air the day after Christmas. So Yes, we, we, we are. It's actually... 60 degrees here in New England and it's been it's been fun because my friends in the south like you guys you guys have mm -hmm. had more snow than we've had and we're in New England so. we haven't had any snow in South Carolina that usually if it ever happens it happens in February or January yeah. but we have had some really some cold cold did. rain <laughs> I know some people got, was it Georgia that got a lot of snow? Who got all that snow? I think uh, North Carolina and Virginia got a lot of snow with the with the, the winter storm that came through. But everybody was like crossing their fingers going, please don't hit us, please don't hit us. And it didn't. <laughs> all well, the bread and milk got off the shelf at Walmart anyway. But If it's a new experience with that much snow or whatever new experience we have, we should go write about those feelings that we have because we never know yes. if we're going to write about it in a novel or for a blog post or something. I do that now, uh, write about, um, that's something we can discuss about having mm -hmm. a set in, in the new year is to write about our experience, whether they're new, old, bad, or good. Have the mindset of writing about all your experiences, but Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. And that's actually what I wanted to focus on a little bit today is what should the writer's mindset be going into a new year? Because it's sort of a clean slate and a fresh start. And there's you might have writers conferences like we do or, or different deadlines you're trying to meet coming up and just just really getting getting focused on what you need to do. Um, what what do you like? How do you do that for yourself? How do you get all your thoughts gathered and, and just just focus your direction? Mm. Well, I I do like a new year, I like a fresh start, but we don't have to wait for the new year. If this mm -hmm. is going to air December 26th, which, and if anybody's watching this, um, you may be watching it in August, but still mm -hmm. this mindset is to start today. You don't have to wait for a new year. You don't even have to wait for a new day. You can do it in a new second. <laughs> that's something that my boss is really good at saying our, our my boss here at my the agency I work at um, she says the most important move is the next move not the one before not the one you're planning out the one is the the very next one that you choose because that could change everything yes and and some of the mindsets that we're going to go over are um, I'll start with the bad one first <laughs> <laughs> Expect rejection. That's all part of the mm -hmm. literary process. Um, it, we're going. To, we'll discuss learning ways to learn. Um, mm -hmm. Learning um, and also we need to um, get out there and network. So what are good mm -hmm. networks? In the new year, this new year, you need to have a mindset of learning, of networking, of writing about your experiences. Um, treating writing as a job, not a hobby. Exactly. Um, something I used to do, I used to put it on the back burner. Um, read. Every mm -hmm. good writer is a good reader. And we can talk about that too. But um, first, let's talk about writing about our experiences. Mm -hmm. Because I can remember, um, and even today, if you go through life, I mean, we have to be delicate. It's like today I'm going to go to some stores and things like that. I love to people watch. Mm -hmm. But I don't get up in their face and say, what did you just say? I missed it. I want my money. <laughs> you, know? you don't do that. People, yeah, that sort of steps over the line with people watching. You got you to gotta make sure they don't know you're watching them. <laughs> But people watch. Um, I want to share a story with you. I this happened uh, this year. This this mm -hmm. year, my sister was in a major car accident. She was oh, no. rear -ended. she was rear-ended on the highway, and she called me. Mm -hmm. I have EMT training. I had EMT training, emergency medical technician training from a long time ago. So that all that stuff 
came to my head 10 years later. Charlene, mm -hmm. don't turn your head. Charlene, get a, get call an ambulance. Charlene, don't, you know, I was telling her all these things to do because she said mm -hmm. she felt fine. I'm like, don't move your neck. Let the go to the, go to the, um, emergency room. She goes, Oh no, I'm fine. We get to the emergency room. My sister, my other sister and I only find out she has a broken neck. Oh my gosh. And she didn't know anything was wrong at the time. Because she thought she shock. felt fine. Uh -huh. Well, you know, this, but th this is a, the, the part of the story, but see, I remember these things. I'm trying to remember these things. And mm -hmm. We go to an, to the trauma unit. They make us drive up to um, Rhode Island Hospital Trauma Unit. So when I walk, we're praying all the way. And as a believer, a Christian, I pray. And I, and I believe the Holy Spirit does impress things on your heart. And so I'm being very alert about my surroundings. Mm -hmm. trauma bay you know this trauma unit bay one unit two bed two or something like that mm -hmm. and so i'm praying over my sister in thinking she's got a broken neck she's in her you know she's in the in the neck brace and everything and she's laying on a cold steel table mm -hmm. and i'm praying and praying and praying and then I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I'll take care of my sister. If she's going to be paralyzed, I'll take care of her. I'm praying. And the Holy Spirit said, stop, look, and listen. I'm like, my sister's got a broken neck, and you want me to look around me? Mm -hmm. What I learned as a writer that, that God taught me or whoever teaches you books is to stop, look, and listen in that situation because I heard – some of the most amaz amazing things beside the chirps and the bings and things of all the machinery, the doctors and how they work so well together. And I, I call it a, um, a chaotic waltz. They know Ooh, it. Too. I like that. A chaotic waltz. They move with each other and they knew how to move with each other during that chaos they knew what the other one was going to do mm -hmm. and amidst all that i learned so much about my writing about my sister about god and when we pay attention to our surroundings our writing will get better and mm -hmm. now you know you're thinking why are you thinking about writing when your sister's got a broken neck well the story ends very well after three doctors from two Hospital said she had a broken neck. We prayed over her. Her neck healed. That's amazing. And that's that's, that's amazing. And then that's an experience that you can share. That's that's an experience that you can share with your writing. Mm -hmm. Yes, but like exactly. If you're, if you're if you're like you just when you're watching this, you just had your holidays with family and friends and mm -hmm. we all have that drama i hate to say it mm -hmm. but drama is more right right worthy i guess story <laughs> but you can make the most the smallest little bit of drama the greatest writing <laughs> Yes, listen, you can. listen to what people say, how they say it. Um, view your surroundings, the way the light, the Christmas lights reflect off of grandpa's glasses or something. I mm -hmm. don't know, but you know, just be observant. The year comes with many challenges just for life. Write about them. Some of the best sellers, I think of Cecil Murphy and some of the mm -hmm. 90 minutes in heaven, but he gleaned the true emotion from Don Piper. Mm -hmm. And to write someone else's emotions is even harder. But if you're going through a difficult time or a happy time or an indifferent time, write what you're feeling even look up if you're happy look up look up 
synonyms for the word happy. If you're ecstatic, if you're sad, if, mm -hmm. if life is tumultuous, look up these words and write them down and keep them in a folder. So writing about your life experiences this year, go through what write life thinking like a writer. Exactly, because honestly, that's how we see the world. That's how, uh, if, you're a, if you're a writer, that's who you are. That's how you process things. That's, that's how you, you look for things. You look for the story and everything, and you usually find it <laughs> most of the time. Um, I know one thing, I, I'm reading one of Tosca Lee's novels right now, and, and the Progeny series, I don't know if you've read that, uh, but one of the things that just really impressed me is the little things that the character notices about her surroundings that I would never even think to include in a description of something. The, the crayon drawings on the telephone book in the hotel or, you know, just things that are all around us that helps you get more familiar with the setting that you don't automatically think, oh, I need to include that. Just little things that you might not, might not even realize you noticed. But those things, having that awareness helps create a better scene, helps create a better environment. And a better character because mm -hmm. I don't notice a lot of things like you and I might not notice a lot of things. My husband, he notices everything. So that could mm -hmm. be a character trait for somebody like they miss nothing. So mm -hmm. we as writers need to look at every little thing <laughs> to write from their point of view. Exactly. And, exactly. I mean, he notices when a house is under construction and how long it's been under construction. Mm -hmm. I don't notice stuff like that. Exactly. But, but a character I with certain life experiences writer, might notice that. I need to as a writer. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about um, learning from other people's writing mm -hmm. and because you're reading other people's writing. And reading is so important to the writer. Mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I first started writing, I didn't start writing until a little over four years ago. I didn't want to. It's hard. Writing is hard. It is. It is very is challenging. And um, I said, well, I don't have to read if I write. And mm -hmm. boy, was that every, every writer, best-selling writers. I mean, I was, I look this up because I have to, I have to prove things to be correct. Mm -hmm. I don't believe everything I hear. I'm like, I <laughs> want to know that I have to read. It's not that I don't want to read, but I had just, I just finished all this textbook reading, I, it was hard. Just all that mm -hmm. reading. Reading's not hard, but I want to read for enjoyment too. Mm -hmm. So I looked it up and I learned that, um, like the successful writers, I mean, Stephen King, um, Jerry B. Jenkins, all the successful writers, Jerry B. Jenkins mm -hmm. says, I'm going to quote him. Writers are readers. Good writers are good readers. And great writers are great readers. And mm -hmm. the Portuguese Nobel Prize winner, Jose Saramago, I don't think I said his right, his name, <laughs> but he was a, the Nobel Prize winner. He even said that good writers are good readers. So if these mm -hmm. people are saying it, I need to do it if I want to be a good writer. Exactly. I, I, I learned. I learned how to, like you were talking about details. I learned how to get those details in there by reading other people's writing because mm -hmm. I'm a very matter of fact person. Uh, I, in, in one of the first things that I learned in one of the classes as a writer was dancing with dialogue with Cecil Murphy. So mm -hmm. I can write dialogue, I can write dialogue all day. But to put the stuff in between, mm -hmm. I need to because it's a, it's it's it is it's like a dance. It has has to have a certain rhythm to it in order to flow when you're reading it. Mm -hmm. um, I can't I honestly can't remember who said this, but I was listening to some some course on writing dialogue, and they said that dialogue does not need to sound like. It, it does in real life, but it needs to read like it does in real life. So if yes. you were to read the dialogue out loud, it may not sound like exactly what someone would naturally say, but when you're reading it, it needs to be done in a style that your eye processes it like that. And yeah, I was like, like – If someone has a southern accent, you can write their first two or three lines in that southern accent and then just write <laughs> – <laughs> Not you, Caleb. <laughs> 
I mean, a real <laughs> because we know, we know if you're in the <laughs> south, you do <laughs> not, you do not pronounce every letter of every word. So <laughs> there are a lot of apostrophes and stuff. <laughs> Boston has their accent, so mm -hmm. I have read best-selling authors, good, really good writers, and how they do that. They they start off with that accent, a -ya or akika. Mm -hmm. And then they don't continue it hmm. because, well, they do, but they don't. Um, let me back up. I'm trying to remember exactly what Cecil said, but to, to, to get your point across, you don't have to make it so obvious all the time. Hmm. I like that. That's, that is sticky note worthy. <laughs> That's one of those things you put next to your desk. I like that to make your point. To get your point across, you don't have to be so obvious about it. And and that's almost like going into show, don't tell. And that's something I I, believe, I think it was Alton Gansky that that said that on on the first in fiction podcast was um, trust your reader to be smart and to pick up on things. You don't have to necessarily spell everything out if something is supposed to be you know, a, a feel or a, an attitude supposed to come across in the scene, they're going to pick up on it. You don't have to tell them every little thing that happens in the, in the setting, for instance. You might want to name, if it's a familiar thing like a store or a, 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 a trail in nature, you know, something that everyone knows exactly what that looks like. You don't have to spell out everything for them. You can just do one or two really good details that will get their imagination filling in the blanks. Right. And, and I'll, mm. you can be detailed about your character, but not so detailed that you put them in a box that the reader doesn't have any imagination. Mm -hmm. That's I've, exactly. I've done that from, I think, Diane Mills and a few other people. But mm -hmm. so read, and if you're, let's talk about genre real quickly. Mm -hmm. If you're going to read this year, I, I have a list, of, I have a list of books that I want to read. So what I, what I'm going to do is I haven't written them down yet, but in the front of my, um, of my planner, I'm going to write the mm -hmm. books I want to read. And then once I read them, I'm going to check them off. <laughs> I'm not That's a good idea. Them. I need I to don't... get organized about my reading list. I'm reading like five books right now. <laughs> and it gets really confusing because you forget one that you started, but and I just, I'm so eager to start a new one. You just get several going at yes. the same time and, and i i could do that but I, right now i'm i'm homeschooling so i'm picking books that my son and i can and my mm -hmm. friend sent me a book um on for christmas on kindle and it's mm -hmm. supposed to be i'm gonna look up real quickly but it's supposed to be a really really good book and i've never heard of it before and it's a mm -hmm. bestseller and I'm like, I want to, I want to read books that my son and I can read together, and then I'll get books that I can read on my own. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm reading all day with my business, book proposal business, and coaching. That now it's by the end of the day, I'm my eyes are your eyes are tired. <laughs> Audio books. I, I really think that not just reading a book, but listening to books. A book that I highly recommend is Jerry B. Jenkins' audio book on, um, oh, what was his last book? Dry Bones, The Valley of Dry Bones. Mm, yes, I heard of it. I haven't read it, but I did hear about it. I, I highly recommend listening to it. Mm -hmm. The narrator is phenomenal. You, the way he reads each character, you can visualize it just the way he reads. There's, mm -hmm. um, there's, Women, Southern, every, you know, black, white, Mexican, all, all different nationalities in this book. And this guy does a great job. So when you're, when you're listening to the character speak and then mm -hmm. narrate what's going on, Jerry doesn't go into specifics about everything in this character, but you can hear it. Mm -hmm. You can hear it in the way he, the, the um, narrator reads it, but you can also hear it the way it's written, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. The exactly. I heard Alton Gansky say something similar to that, and it's something I'm trying to keep in mind while I'm doing rewrites of the book I'm writing right now. Um, you, 
on certain characters, maybe not every character in the book, but especially in your main set of characters, you should be able to tell who's speaking without any dialogue tags. You should still include the dialogue yes. tags, but their, their yes. style of talking should be so specific. And I've noticed that in his writing because I'm reading several of his books and you can. Each character has their own catchphrases or their own – the, the and, things and they say a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's learned. Mm -hmm. uh, we That's why, like we talked about – listen and write about your experience be observant this year be mm -hmm. observant and, and and see and understand how people say different things like i would i would describe a scene differently than you would i would use different mm -hmm. words than you would um this book is called let me see love does by bob goff have you ever heard of it I have not. I haven't heard of that before. It, it's it's a book about a guy who and his son and their adventures, but mm -hmm. it, I think it's a true story. And it's it's amazing on um, all the stuff that's out there mm -hmm. to read. Um, but I would say if you're going to read, prioritize your reading. Prioritize mm. reading to help your writing. Mm -hmm. I did something this past year within the past couple of months that it it wasn't my this wasn't why I did it, but it ended up working really well for my writing my my, my writing journey as well. I I don't have internet anymore where I where I live. Um, I just really? wasn't I was not using it enough to justify. You know, to justify having it, I never used it because I'm always away from home. And when I am home during the evenings, on the rare occasion I'm actually at, at home during the evenings with with no obligations, it's I read instead of turning on Netflix, instead of turning on YouTube or whatever. It's just so easy to do something. And there's nothing wrong with you know watching TV, but it it it's something very easy to click on, and then you don't have to to work your brain quite as hard. But Reading instead at night, I binge read. I've been up, catch myself. It's one o'clock in the morning, and I'm still reading, and I don't even realize the time has passed. <laughs> it's it's really yeah, it really has helped, and I've noticed it's improving my writing and my my editing eye too. Catching catching common mistakes and stuff in my writing that I need to correct based on what I've learned reading other people a lot. Yes, so that's yes. Mm -hmm, so really good. Here, the mindset is. Write about your experiences. I mean, write about them then and there. You can text yourself a little things. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I do that I do all that. the time. I do that constantly. I text myself or email. Um, mm -hmm. Read. You you need to read. But I say prioritize your reading. Prioritize mm -hmm. um, what you know you need to read. Take the time now to do it. I'm going to take one day. And I'm going to organize my reading. And um, I, I already have a calendar right here mm -hmm. of what I do each day. Um, but I organize myself. I know that between 12 and 2, I'm really not, I don't have a lot of energy. But sometimes mm -hmm. I schedule, sometimes I'll schedule phone calls with my clients during them because I get energy mm -hmm. from them. Exactly. Then, um, I read later, but I try to get everything done before noontime. Because you know, I do have chronic fatigue and mm -hmm. fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. different from most people. So, um, you know, if you want to learn more about writing with disabilities, you can go to almostanauthor.com, mm -hmm. almostanauthor.com, and there's a there's a column there writing with dis is crossed out abilities and mm -hmm. the gentleman who writes that column um martin johnson is he does a good job and other people have written it too he he is um disabled he died and he has a brain injury and he still writes so we have no excuses <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely take one day and schedule i just went off on a bunny trail but take one mm -hmm. day and schedule your writing for the year um, if if you want to gain writing jobs, write a list of people that you want to either query 
or, mm -hmm. or blogs that you want to write for, schedule time during your week to do that. I know a lot of people work full time. Mm -hmm. Schedule, if you schedule 15 minutes one night a week to query publishers or query, you know, people who have blogs or what magazines or whatever, you probably could get two or three out. You know, I said, mm -hmm. I can't write, um, my, you know, I'm homeschooling my son. I said, I'm going to start small and I'm going to write 15 minutes a day. And I'm going to write while he's doing his schoolwork. Mm -hmm. I can, sometimes I can get up to three pages done in 15 exactly. minutes. Exactly. And you, you lose track of why I usually have a word count that I, I make myself get done during one sitting before I get up and you lose track sometimes and you, oh, and you overshoot, you do more than that. And then that makes you mm -hmm. feel like you really accomplished something. What so time you, of the day have you, I've, I've heard different people. I know you said you've got specific times where you've I'm got, you know, free morning. time. Mm -hmm. I'm best in I've, the morning. I've tried and that's something I've heard and it took me a while to actually implement it <laughs> but before experiment with the time of day that you choose to write do it get up early and write stay up late and write do it in, the, in your lunch break do different things and see and I was like oh I don't want to get out of bed that early <laughs> but yeah, even it, if it's it 15 really, minutes earlier you can you but start you do small. you you do realize that different times of the day work better. And actually I do write well at the beginning of the day. And I didn't think I would because you know, you it takes a while to get your brain going, but I, I do find it, it easier to get creative early in the morning. And then that gets you energized for the rest of the day. So that's, it, it, yeah. it's a good thing that I do recommend trying, try it at different, different times of the day, different days of the week. Sometimes if you have a really busy schedule, mm -hmm. my friend Dirk, he's my friend and client taught me a lot of mm -hmm. things um, how to have it. You can get him at Dirk Swartz. You know what, what I'll do is um, I'll email it to you. Remind mm -hmm. me, email mm -hmm. it to you and you can put it in the, in the notes, but it's Dirk mm -hmm. Swartz dot CO dot UK. I think might be mm -hmm. UA. Mm -hmm. He's from South Africa. He said, start oh, wow. very small. Yeah. He said, mm -hmm. start. He, he teaches companies and stuff. He he's a um, he's a coach for companies and marriage coach. But he said start small, very small. If you get up five minutes early and start for one week and write for five minutes, then get up ten minutes early and write for mm -hmm. ten minutes. Little little pieces at a time. So I know we don't have much time left. So what mm -hmm. we I did want to your experiences. I did want to touch also, I know you had mentioned treat your writing as a job, taking yourself yes. seriously as a writer. Um, one thing, if you watched our, our podcast last week, or I think it was, I think it was two weeks ago, actually, the last episode aired with Aaron Gansky. Um, he said he started taking himself more seriously as a writer when people would ask him, okay, what do you do for a living? Where do you work? And he would say, well, I'm a writer. And I also have a day job. I also teach during, you know, during the day. I've started to do that. And it really, it, it makes you take yourself more seriously. And then if you're telling everyone you're a writer, I mean, then you're going to make the time because that's the reputation that you're getting. Oh, you're the writer in the group. You're yes. going to make the time to write every day and to, to make sure that you, you have integrity when you say that. And that's yes. something that's, that's, that's really helped me. Yes, definitely. It's mm -hmm. it's not a hobby. I was treating it at a as a hobby, and when I put it on my schedule every day to write for fifteen minutes, but I usually mm -hmm. write a little bit more. Um, I can get at least fifteen minutes in before my son needs me. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, even if it's writing about what happened the day before, mm -hmm. you know, write about your experiences, write about what you read. But schedule the time. You are a writer. So I'm just going to recap. Write about, mm -hmm. have the mindset this year, today, to write about your experiences, to read in your genre that you want to write in, and to um, treat it as a job. Uh, and I highly suggest to attend a writer's conference mm -hmm. if you can't afford it. There's, there's, you can spend 30 minutes on a show like this. Um, there's 
training. There's a lot of free training. I went to YouTube mm -hmm. and found everything from POV to my book proposal writing. I learned how to do my website. I built my own website from scratch on a how-to video in YouTube. But mm -hmm. Jerry B. Jenkins has Jerry's Guild, or he has his he has his writing um, his writing blog. Serious Writer has classes. Serious Writer yeah. has classes. Um, they have one or two day affordable writing conferences. Mm -hmm. You can write them and say, hey, when are you coming to my area? Or say, hey, come to my area. <laughs> um, there's so much out there that is free. You can glean from another writing friend. Take a friend who to coffee and, and learn from them, but learn. And if in another thing is network. Mm -hmm. Writing can be a lonely job. I'm an extrovert, so I'm never lonely. <laughs> Me too. And that's weird because most writers, I get the feeling that, that the majority of writers are introverts. And, and, yes, and, and they we, are. We and make up one of the, we've got the extrovert tendency, which almost is a hindrance sometimes because it makes yes, it harder yes, to, because to, I want to, to be shut everything out and, and focus. <laughs> exactly. I want to be out socializing instead of writing. But, exactly. Uh, but um, call up a friend or you. there's always – Zoom or um, FaceTime or, you know, all these things. Call up a friend, go out to coffee and glean from them. Mm -hmm. um, the best place to network is writers conferences. But yeah, there's, yeah. there's always, yeah, yeah. we have, a, we have a, a writing family. There's writing families online with mm -hmm. writers chat. Writers Chat meets every Tuesday at 11 o'clock. You can go to Writers Chat um, members on Facebook. You can you become a Writers Chat member. It doesn't cost anything. You get you get in there. You learn so much. We have after parties where you can ask a question. Okay, I want to I want to make you guys laugh before mm -hmm. we end. My first writer's conference was four years ago. Mm -hmm. And my first class was Dancing with Dialogue with Cecil Murphy. And people were talking, they were throwing out all these words, you know, mm -hmm. POV and all these words. And I'm like, I knew none of it. Mm -hmm. And you want to laugh. I raised my hand. Cecil, what's a protagonist? <laughs> and you laugh. But I prefaced it with this. I'm a new writer. You can laugh at me, but what is a protagonist? And mm -hmm. I think how far I have come because I've I've gone online and learned. I've attended conferences. I'm reading now. I'm writing a little bit every day. I'm trying to write about my experiences. And I've attended writers chat and other things. And God, mm -hmm. and God has brought me a long way. So um, in your mindset for this new year, and I want to wish you a happy new year, whoever's watching. You too. Yes. Thank you. But <laughs> every moment is a new start. Don't get down on yourself. Don't be mm -hmm. hard on yourself. You are a writer. Whether you're, whether your writing inspires one person or a million, it doesn't matter because that one person could go on and inspire millions of other people. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know. You write, you write because you're called to write. You write for healing. You write so other people can be healed. You write for entertainment. You write so other people can be entertained. Mm -hmm. You write for knowledge and you write so other people can have knowledge. Writing is calling some people are gifted writers and some people like me learn how to write well and i'm still learning because i'm not the best writer mm -hmm. and and if you ask people like people who teach writing like diane mills and jerry b jenkins and cecil murphy they're all still learning writing and mm -hmm. they're teaching them. 
Exactly. So, so I, we, we just want to help you step into the new year or even step when you, when you click off this, this um, webinar, whatever you want to call it, this, this little chat, start small, say, I'm a writer and start implementing these things. Write about your experiences. Schedule, if you can't schedule a whole day, schedule 10 or 15 minutes each day mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you can get yourself prepared for the year. You can do it now. Mm -hmm. if, if people won't leave you alone, put on a hat or throw your shirt over your head or whatever and say, when I have this hat on, I am writing. This is my writing hat. Mm -hmm. Do not disturb me unless the house is on fire. Write to me. <laughs> <laughs> right during right during your lunch break you know people like Caleb and I we would probably rather be out having lunch and talking to our friends so we need to sacrifice and write mm -hmm. instead of going out and socializing uh, uh, extrovert hint if there are any other if there are any other extrovert writers which I, I doubt sometimes because I feel like we're 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 kind of the uh the minority <laughs> with the writers group but writing in a coffee shop is really good because you are around people and you hear the the conversations and stuff and it it helps you it helps you focus on your writing and it also helps you be around other people at the same time um unless you have focus problems like i do in which case that could be a distraction but it, it's it is still a good start Yes. And thank you, Caleb, for having me on. I'm, I'm thinking maybe if we want to do another program, mm -hmm. we could do the different genres and writing in different genres, or that would be an idea. Maybe somebody else could do too, because mm -hmm. I know in a new year, someone might want to start a new type of writing, like writing. Exactly. Like, I, I was fixed on nonfiction. I'm writing nonfiction, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Not writing a suspense thriller. <laughs> Mm -hmm. fiction and exactly so um there's so many genres out there if you want to change genres there's nothing keeping you from doing that nothing exactly Unless and then each um, one that you write in helps you write better in the others because they all have a common thread they all you have to be Descript eloquent and and show and not tell and, and every one of them. So. so yeah, so that would that would probably be a good one. But I want to wish you a mm -hmm. happy new year, Caleb. Yes, happy new year to you too. And since we're recording and Christmas hasn't happened yet, Merry Christmas and to everybody else that's watching this on the twenty sixth. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. If anybody needs help, I, I do have. Um, I would love to help you uh, in your writing journey. I am mm -hmm. a writing coach. Um. And I also do book proposals. I edit books. I, mm -hmm. I just love to help writers in their journey to publication. Mm -hmm. And I will laugh with you. I will cry with you. I will eat chocolate with you so we both feel better. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> I will send you chocolate. <laughs> but um, you can contact me at editor at the right proposal.com. That's editor at T H E W R I T E proposal.com. Awesome. Or you can well, contact you. Caleb. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much for being on the show, and we will see all of you guys in the new year.